Hello and welcome to Advantage One RV, where we have a basically brand new RV at a used RV price tag. This has only 1,100 miles and 8.6 hours on the generator. So why is this here? You know, why, why did somebody want to let go of a virtually new RV? That's always the first question that I have, and I presume it's going to be one of the first questions that anybody has when you look at something like this. And the short answer is due to their, their job and due to all the uh, fun circumstances that we've all been enjoying the last year and a half, they just weren't able to go and do. And they're not looking like they're going to be able to do that anytime soon. So they said, it just doesn't make sense to continue to hold on to this thing. When we get ready to get back into it, when things change for us and settle down, we'll give you a call. So uh, up front here, what we're looking at, you've got that TV that can pivot out for easy viewing. Very nice from your dinette, which is going to be your primary interior seating space. And that is a best in class, 750 pound rated overhead bunk up there. That's something that Jayco really touts a lot is that they have a bigger, thicker, heavier forward cab structure area, which also translates into fewer leak potentials because stuff doesn't wiggle and jiggle near as much. We're 100 inch wide body, we're seven foot tall. We got that nice quiet Coleman Mach AC unit with double ducting all the way through the RV to get you some really good airflow in a small, small space. And I love the color palette. I like that light and kind of creamy sort of, I don't know, peanut buttery goodness. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense or not. That, a lot of what I say makes sense to me, and then I go, does that make sense to a normal person? And I'm not sure it does. <laughs> We're on a Chevy chassis. We've got a 5,000 pound tow rating. And this is the Red Hawk SE series. This is the most simple, basic thing that Jayco makes in the motorized market. And yet it's it's it speaks to me. I like the basic simplicity. If I was going to full-time, sure, I'd want more bells and whistles and whiz bangs, but I don't do that. You know, I casual camp. If I was just going to take a family trip, this is kind of my speed here. I love the position, by the way, of the uh, the backup camera monitor. It's up where you would expect a rear view mirror. That is where somebody like me who doesn't motor home all the time, uh, you know, th that's where I expect to look to see behind me. And case in point, I do. I mean, look at how little this was used. That's the original carpet square from the factory where people like me would wipe our feet before we walked in. It's all still here. We've got power windows and it does have the basic functions like cruise, of course, you know, it's it's not something that's gonna wear you out driving it or anything like that. Another thing I like to point out on Jayco's is you're not really seeing it right now, but they have uh, four seat belts for this dinette. It, Jayco's very good about making sure that they actually, they don't even have to put seat belts for this bench right here. There's still a pair of seat belts and anytime you see seat belts on a Jayco, they are rated to exceed the safety requirements for pull testing and stress testing by 10%. That's cool. Easy to miss down here too. Something my kid would love for transit is not just household, but USB plugs on that little uh, charge plate right there. Man, when we're going down the road, she can wear a phone out. You also see how that's a no knee knocker dream dinette. So that can fold up and down pretty darn easily. Big window here. And I tell you what, that is something that's, that I... It kind of takes me back to my childhood. Between my fifth and sixth grade years in school, um, we, we took a family trip to uh, Georgia and back. And I just remember soaking in all the sights and all the different scenes out of the windshield and the windows and whatnot. That big window right there, that's something where I think if I were a kid, I'd be sitting there just looking out the window, checking things out, getting to see the country, getting to experience things. You know, there's just like everyone has that memory of where you're like on a, on a road where there's lots of trees and it looks like broccoli. You know, I, I want to give that to my kid, if that makes sense. And I'll tell you, I've always been really impressed by the storage capacity in this smaller coach right here. A lot of times when you, you know, you see a small rig, you start thinking small capacities and this one kind of breaks that mold. Does not have a traditional oven, but you see it's got that convection there. And just like most other things in the RV, not a whole heck of a lot of use shown on this thing. I think it's probably only enjoyed one or two trips. And again, thankfully, when it wasn't being used, some good care, maintenance, and upkeep applied. Big space for a wastebasket there. I always look for that in an RV. It's kind of a pet peeve of mine when uh, even a trailer or a motorhome, anything, if it doesn't have a spot for at least a little wastebasket, I don't want to, like, you know, tie Walmart bags to my you know, door handles and, and call that my storage space. And also a small coach that has a dedicated pantry space like this. It's nice and wide. It's not super deep. It's nice and wide though. The shelves are deep enough. You got your, you know, room for your box or your craft macaroni and cheese or whatnot back there. I like my SpongeBob shapes myself. <laughs> 
But if you're wondering why that pantry wasn't a little bit deeper, all you have to do is take one step around the corner here to the bedroom space and you get your answer because they gave you some big, deep personal storage space here in the bedroom area. That is a huge hanging closet that they turned into. The previous owners put some of those kind of hanging shoe rack wardrobe organizer jobs right there. Obviously, they just hang on the rod. You could take those out if you wanted to. And some, since this is a nice deep bed slide, they were able to give us some pretty decent storage above that as well. And you may have noticed we obviously have a privacy curtain just to our right as we're facing right now. I like the side stands on either side of the bed. Gives you a nice place to set a phone at night. I, I don't know. What do you guys think? I think those are probably deep enough for CPAP use. And there are some power outlets uh, always near the bed sides of these. Jayco's pretty darn good about that. This is a short queen. It kind of pretty much has to be because the bathroom is directly across from it. That is what allows us to walk around it. And that's one of the things here is... It, you know, there's a lot of brands who build a lighter weight, maybe less expensive version of a floor plan like this with just a corner bed where you have to kind of crawl over one another. The sheets never fit at all because, you know, one of the sides is always rounded or cut off or something like that so you can get in and out. This one lets you walk around the bed. It does mean that you lose the bed in transit. We are going to see a look at this in travel mode in just a moment. First though, I wanna finish up everything inside, taking a look at the bathroom here. With this having that really tall ceiling, you're not going to have headroom issues in that shower. And why, man, does a big window in the bathroom feel so upscale? There, I don't know why, because I would probably always have the shade closed, but it always looks and feels classy to me. Is it just me? I also like to take the time to show everything in travel mode. And on this floor plan, that's not going to take too awful long because obviously over here in the kitchen and living space, there's nothing that really slides around. I like to show you that you can definitely still use the uh, bathroom with the slide closed. The door is going to open wide enough. You can very easily navigate through there. You will kind of lose the bed in travel mode, though, because the bed that slides is straight across from the bathroom. The mattress does have to fold to make some room for it. But... At your destination, you don't have a corner crawl over one another bed. So it's kind of a give and take feature. I like being able to walk around the bed personally. I feel like this is a motorhome. It's pretty easy to park this off in the corner and never land if I do need to open that slide to sleep at night. This would be my preferred arrangement. But what do you guys think? And the smaller size on this one, it's basically going to feel like just driving a really big van, like almost like a 15 passenger van. Um, it doesn't have quite the, uh, the the scary sort of size feeling that a, a larger coach or even like a trailer and, and truck combination might have. And again, stored, uh, they, I, they must have stored it inside. I don't have confirmation of that, either that or they were right on top of their upkeep and cleaning routines because it looks phenomenal from ground level here. The skin, the decals look great. The tires aren't weather checked and dry rotted out. There's not enough use on the tires to have really you know, worn down any of the wear and tear or anything like that. Um, the uh, storage on a Class C is always tricky because it doesn't have enough of a, a, a tall enough chassis to give you some huge outside compartments. But overall, I think they did good with what they had. Once again, that generator right there, humming like a top. It was 8.6 hours when I started this. I'm sure I'll, I'll have added a couple tenths of hours to it afterwards. Got our outside shower, black tank flush right there. And I, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the type of person that likes to reuse sewer hoses. I don't know if that was used. If it were me, I would probably still go ahead and throw that away. Just, just be, I'm not a germaphobe, but that's a, that's a different kind of thing. You know what I mean? We've got a 5,000 pound tow rating on this. Uh, I like how the rear view camera is actually integrated into that extra stoplight bar above the, uh, Jayco logo right there. Over here, we got our power awning, of course. And this does have a power entry step as opposed to just a, uh, a built-in step-down bucket, which can get hit on things like um, uh, speed bumps. Have you guys ever pulled into a campground with a really nice driveway? Because folks, I camp, I sure haven't. Even the ones that are paved, they got the giant speed bumps and I'm like, oh, this, this sucks, this is gonna hurt. Outside entertainment plugs here is a cool little thing. And it is solar ready. There is prep on the roof that we'll see. And that is where a charge controller could be located if you are so inclined. Overall, I'm telling you, from ground level, this thing looks good. Oh, something I haven't talked about is that sleeve over nose cap. The walls actually do run all the way to the tip of that nose cap. But you see how the, the nose cap sleeves way over those. So it puts those seams away from an area of high stress to an area of low stress. 
Plus remember they have a heavier duty bulky construction on that nose area so that you don't have leaks. I mean, this is small, it is simple. It's built like a brick house though. It's, it's built for running, man. And again, just to show you, this has been very well kept up here on the roof. The membrane looks fantastic. I don't even think it needs a light mopping, you know? All you're seeing here is that it rained a little bit last night and there's just a little bit of dust that settled on it. All of the original factory seals still looking phenomenal. You can see how there's not like, uh, you know, fading of your roof fixtures and, and it hasn't like been hit up here, like a tree branch hasn't hit it or anything like that. And there's that roof solar prep plug. So if you wanted to add some panels up here, you wanted to kind of alleviate some of the load on your generator to keep your batteries topped off, you have the ability to do that on this coach. So if you like what you see here, give us a call. We'll get you camping. You have any questions, let us know. We'll do our best to fill in. And as always, if you appreciate seeing things like this, hit that subscribe button to follow along. If you like the camper, hit the like button on the video. All that normal YouTube stuff. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day, everyone.